Round transportation in our region may never be quite the same now that Uber has come to town. Not only has the rideshare company broken new ground by picking up and dropping off passengers at Pittsburgh International Airport, it's shaken things up in our region's technology community as well by setting up a research center in the East End aimed at eventually developing a driverless car and recruiting top talent from Carnegie Mellon University to make it all happen. Jennifer Crucius is general manager of Uber Pittsburgh, and welcome. Good to have you. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Yeah, it's a, it, well, it's exciting. You know, you hear about these names, these emerging companies across the country, but when they show up in Pittsburgh kind of early on, sometimes we scratch our heads here. Why Pittsburgh? What made this market of such interest to Uber? Sure. So, um, first of all, I'm from Pittsburgh, and as you well know, the transportation options here have been relatively limited. We have a lot of business downtown, and a lot of people trying to utilize all of the new restaurants and the new emergence of the downtown that's been happening lately. Um, and we've just seen that there's been a ton of opportunity here. So we've heard from thousands of people requesting more access to transportation services. Um, and it looked like a really promising place to, to open up operations. So for folks who don't know Uber, what's the edge? What's the innovation here that sort of made it possible to turn it all upside down in this space? Sure. So we're a technology company and we connect riders and drivers at the touch of a button. So. Um, here in Pittsburgh, we have our UberX and UberXL products. Um, UberX is uh, people that have gone through a pretty thorough background check. So we have a seven year state, county, federal, sex offender registry, um, motor vehicle check. And once they're, it, they would be people like you and me that are driving their own car. They get approved by um, our system. And then once they're eligible to be drivers, uh, a rider can download the app. You would open your app and you'd see where there are available cars. Um, we have a, about a five minute estimated time of arrival here in Pittsburgh. So within five minutes, you could touch a button, have a car come pick you up and take you wherever you'd like to go. I mean, seriously, like pretty much everywhere, anywhere within Pittsburgh, you can get that yep, kind of so response? Yes, so we service all of Allegheny County um, and we're also open in 13 other cities in Pennsylvania. Um, so it's more than just Pittsburgh, but um, we've seen a tremendous response here in Pittsburgh being able to connect people that have previously had a hard time either finding transportation options or getting to doctor's appointments or when you know the bus schedule is limited or doesn't connect in the right sort of areas to make it convenient, um, Uber is a great alternative for that. And obviously there's existing players in the space. I know P Pittsburgh Transportation, the parent company, a yellow cab, mm -hmm. has started its own app. I think, yeah, I think right. they could sort of one-up Uber maybe or at least compete with you. Is that a concern at all or do you see that in other markets as well, these kinds of responses happening? I mean, we welcome competition in all forms, um, both from the driver and the rider side. So um, I think in Pittsburgh, we think there's plenty of room for everyone in the market, um, and we hope that we're able to learn things from our competitors, and they're able to learn things from us, and together we can make a better transportation ecosystem here. Well, there has been, as you mentioned at the beginning, some frustration here in Pittsburgh, especially around cabs and just getting rides, when you need to go, where you need to go. One of the biggest issues everybody has is how to get to the airport and how to get back. I, I guess the relationship you have now with the airport authority here is, is unusual even for Uber across the United States. Yeah, so airport authorities tend to have have different rules and regulations um, based on city or state or county. So here in Pennsylvania, at least with the Allegheny County Airport Authority, they have a separate jurisdiction. So um, we also are working with them and we've recently gotten a, a license to operate there at the airport. Um, we've always been able to drop off passengers, but this allows us to um, do pickups as well. And, and we're really pleased to be able to connect people that are arriving in town with Pittsburgh and with the places and the people they love here. What about in general in Pennsylvania? Uber's operating on a, what, a provisional license right now, and mm -hmm. uh, what would it take? Legislation to actually make it a permanent, a, a permanent part of Pennsylvania's transportation? Yeah, so when we entered Pittsburgh, um, there wasn't a license for what we did. Um, so we're not classified as a taxi cab because it's personal cars and because it's an application, so it's um, a different structure. So we worked with the PUC and we got uh, a temporary authority, which gave us a license to operate for a while, and then they passed a two-year license. So um, since January, we've been operating under that two-year license, um, and the PUC and us and legislators are well as working, sorry, as well are working together to um, get a permanent home for ride-sharing in Pennsylvania. 
Okay, and I guess we'll see how that unfolds in the legislature right now, right? So part yes. of the current session, trying to see if you can move that. That's through. right. The other big thing that's attracted a lot of attention in Uber is not just moving people around on the ground, but really developing whole new modes of transportation here, placing a big bet on some of the the, the talent and, and the innovation that's been coming out of Carnegie Mellon University. Yeah, we're like thrilled to be working with Carnegie Mellon is obviously a leader in this space, um, especially in robotics and technology in general. Um, so we've been working with them on a, a longer term partnership. Um, in the short term, we're working on mapping and GPS and safety features. Um, I think this is what we see as part of our research and development for a company like Uber um, that wants to be on the cutting edge, um, hopefully forever. And so the kinds of things they're going to be, and you've uh, identified a site in, the, in Lawrenceville, right, where they're going to be setting up the research facility. So a real potential then to grow that research presence in Pittsburgh as well over time. Absolutely. So I guess what's in the media future for Uber uh, beyond what we've already talked about? Sure, I think um, as we continue to grow our presence here in Pittsburgh and across the state, um, we'll be thinking about expanding service, so really becoming um, uh, growing outside of Allegheny County to include some of the counties surrounding um, and to be able to offer other services. So right now we have UberX and UberXL. Um, Uber XL is for six passengers if you want to go with a group. Um, if you're traveling with, you know, when you have family out of town, for example, is when I, I tend to use it. Um, but we'll, we'll have other products that we do have in other markets rolling out here um, and other partnerships to help connect people in a, in a more efficient and effective manner. Oh, crazy. It's been a, generated a lot of excitement, a lot of, uh, a, a lot of enthusiasm in so many ways, given some of the issues we've had in Pittsburgh over the years around moving people around. It's so critically important to everybody. Yeah, thanks. We're thrilled to be here. And um, I'd encourage anyone that hasn't given us a try to check us out and see um, what it's all about. All right, very good. Jennifer Crucius from Uber, thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah. And when we return, a peek at the Peacemaker, a company that prints up new toys right at the toy store. Stay with us.